Well, hello there everyone and welcome to my radioactivity series. Um, in this video I want to talk about Geiger counters a bit, what they do, what they don't do, how to get yourself a cheap one and just in general a bit, look how they work and stuff. So, hope you have fun. So, first of all I want to show you some Geiger Miller tubes. These are essentially the sensors that you find in your Geiger counter and it's basically the most important part. And the thing is they come in different flavors, like not every Geiger Miller tube is sensitive to the same kind of radiation. Um, here this is like my collection so far. This one here, this is quite my favorite till now, the SBT11A. Um, this one is sensitive to alpha, beta and gamma radiation, so it's kind of a full range all round uh, tube. Even though x-rays can be a bit tricky for Geiger-Miller tubes, not all can detect them. But this one, the M4011, this can, I actually even tested that at my dentist and it worked really well. Um, over here I have a really small one. I found these on a sale uh, recently and this is only sensitive to gamma radiation, but it also seems to work. Would be nice to make like a really compact, small Geiger counter. The SPM20 here, this is kind of a standard, or you see a lot of them around. This was probably the standard in uh, most um, Russian um, Geiger counters. And then down here, there's a really big one, the SI22G. This is also mostly sensitive to gamma, maybe it'll pick up some other stuff. But this here actually is for a future project. I want to build a muon detector, like a cosmic ray detector out of two of these. So basically how a Geiger counter works is um, you'll need a small controller um, that gives out a high voltage. It's not that high for a lot of tubes. It's around 400 volts um, DC but very little uh, amount of amps so it's not dangerous or so. I touch these contacts multiple times, you don't even feel the electricity. And the point is, um, these tubes are filled with an inert gas. It's something like a vacuum tube, but it's not a vacuum. And you have your voltage here, which can't pass by normally, but if uh, an alpha or a beta or a gamma particle or a wave flies through the tube, it ionizes a little bit of the gas and in that moment electricity can jump. And that's how you get your detections. So let's take a look at some different Geiger counters. Um, this one here, this is like a, a kit, you can get them on the internet for really cheap. I think for this kit here this was already assembled, I didn't even have to solder anything came with a different tube, but doesn't really matter. This was under 50, 50 euros or uh, dollars or whatever. If you're lucky, you'll find some, some of these for around 30 bucks. So that's probably the cheapest way to, to get a Geiger counter. You just don't have like a casing, but you can build that yourself if you want. Actually, this one here is uh, the same kit almost, but I just built the housing and put some buttons on and stuff. And this works really well for me. I really like this one actually. And also like to test them, this thing here is a radium painted uh, watch. So you see, they work. Put this one away. Also the kit we can check. I'm not really sure about the voltage here yet. But this also seems to detect something. So. That seems to work too. And here are my two favorites. Um, this one here looks really professional. Oh, let's turn off this guy here quick. Oh. This is really awesome. I borrowed this from a good friend. Thank you, Shreddy, for this. And it looks really, really professional. It has an American made pancake, alpha beta gamma probe. It looks really professional, but this is full DIY. He really built this himself. It's beautiful. So this also works quite well. This one here, this is my favorite and also 
the one I use most often. I built this actually assembled for around a hundred dollars and it came with the, the Chinese M4011 tube. Meanwhile I hacked it, I put the SPT11A tube in because I just wanted to have an alpha, beta and gamma uh, detector. Also this one works really well as you see. So yeah that's like about the price range, I mean you can get yourself something like this for 30 bucks with a tube and just build yourself some casing. If you're really patient and really good you can build something great like this. If you don't want to build it yourself and you just want a working Geiger counter, I really would suggest you this model. I don't want to do any commercials here but I kind of like this company. And also the way it's built, it's really easy to modify and hack. You can take the whole thing apart and do changes and like that's really cool. What you also can do is logging. You can log your data. I think it's also with these Arduino boards possible but I'm not really an Arduino expert so don't know exactly how this works. But on this here you just have a USB out. It has a little bit of internal uh, memory and you can get yourself like Excel data out and like make graphs and curves which is really cool. Um, I'll show you one of those graphs right now. This was from a trip to Greece that I made and what you can see is actually the way back. The high peak in the beginning that's the x-ray security scan at the airport and then the lower longer peak that's actually cosmic radiation that's just the more the higher amount of cosmic radiation that you get in an airplane because you have less air to protect you so you're higher in the atmosphere and that's really really fascinating. So basically what Geiger counters do is detect ionizing radiation, radioactivity, that's their job. And what they can't do however is tell you what kind of radioactive material you are measuring. If you want to do that you'll need a scintillator or a scintillation detector. And they're really interesting but they work in a quite different principle. They're also a bit more expensive, there's some DIY solutions, didn't really have the time to build myself one yet but that's a future project. And what you can do however, you have to trick yourself there into doing that a bit. You can determine if you're measuring alpha, beta or gamma or x-ray radiation. Well gamma and x-ray are a bit difficult to get apart from each other but it's really easy to determine if you are measuring alpha, beta or gamma radiation with a simple trick which I'll show you right now. So this here is a simple trick to determine um, if you get alpha, beta or gamma radiation. In here I have a small piece of pitch blend. This is a natural uranium ore. It's quite radioactive actually and I would expect a lot of alpha and a lot of gamma but almost no beta radiation from this. And let's see if that's uh, true. I just put this in a small lid, um, especially to not contaminate the detector here just that I can put it on top. That's what we're doing now. Just place it under the detector. And let's wait till the counts just go up. I want to get to a maximum, like a stable maximum, and then we'll write that down. So I think we're more or less at maximum counts, which are 1987. Yeah, not bad. Okay, 1987, full range. This is alpha, beta, and gamma. 1987. And what we'll do now, I have to restart the counter quick, just to delete the maximum counts. So the thing is alpha radiation, they're quite big particles, they're like two protons and two neutrons strapped together. So it means they get stopped more easy by matter than a gamma or a beta thing. So paper is enough to shield alpha radiation. 
we'll just put the paper on top of our uranium, put the counter back on top, do the same thing, wait two or three minutes till it's at a maximum and then I'll write down that number. So after measuring with the piece of paper as a shield, um, now I'll add some uh, aluminium foil. This should be able to block uh, most beta radiation. The electrons, they don't make it through aluminium foil, mostly. Um, I will put it on top of the paper, other people just switch them out. But I have the experience that sometimes I, I actually get higher count ratings only with the aluminium foil than with the paper. And I guess that's due to some Bremsstrahlung effects. That's like maybe when the alphas hit the aluminium atoms, they knock out some electrons and then you measure them or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. It's a bit weird, but it works better if you just use paper and aluminium foil. So what we'll measure now should be only gamma because we're blocking the alphas and the betas with the paper and the aluminium foil. So I'll just let this count for a minute or two and then we'll see. Okay, I think we're there. So we have a maximum counts per minute of 1243. Let's write this down over here. And now we'll just do um, a simple calculation and we'll find out how much is alpha, how much is beta and how much is gamma. So basically you just do a simple uh, subtraction. I mean the last number we got, we don't even have to calculate anything, that's just gamma, 1243. Then up here we can have the minus alpha that we um, detected with the paper. Minus the gamma, we get 387, would be beta. And of course the full range, the first uh, results we have, we just subtract beta and gamma and we get 357, would be alpha. This is not like really precise or fully um, scientifical correct, but it's an easy way to kind of determine what kind of radiation you get. Actually, I'm astonished that I have more beta than alpha. This shouldn't be this way, but it's probably because I didn't have the detector close enough to really pick up all the alphas. An alpha particle mostly doesn't make it through more than like a centimeter or two of air. It kind of gets stopped fast there too. So yeah, it's not like really precise or scientifically correct, but it gives you an idea of what kind of radiation you detect. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed and I maybe could help you out with some ideas or whatever. If you like my video, please subscribe or give me some likes. I really appreciate that and see you soon. Keep counting. Bye.